Today we're looking at the ROM X upgrade for the Apple II and Apple II Plus. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. So what is the ROM X? Well, the ROM X is a ROM replacement for the Apple II and Apple II Plus computers. It was designed by the blokes from down under, Dean Claxton and Jeff Mazur. Now you're probably thinking, so what, right? ROM replacements are a dime a dozen and they're everywhere for the Apple II. What makes this thing so special? Well, I'm going to tell you. First off, it can hold several different ROM images, so that's cool. Secondly, they are switchable and selectable at power on, so you don't have to get into the machine, flip switches, have a switch on the outside, take things apart or do anything to pick the ROM image you want at boot. And finally, you can flash the images from the Apple II itself right off the floppy disk without any special tools. One little additional thing as well is that it has an optional add-on that you can put in conjunction with the ROM X that allows you to change the character ROM. So you can change the on-screen font at power on too. Super cool. So enough blabbing. Let's get inside and check it out. So what comes in the box? Well, first you'll get the ROM X unit itself well packed with foam to protect the pins and in a static bag. If you order the character ROM along with it, you'll get that too, and a communications cable to link the two units together. Now let's look at the installation. The first step is to take your Apple II down to bare metal. The next step is to remove the original ROMs, but I'm going to label mine first in case I ever want to put them back. I also have to remove the 74LS138 because the ROM X uses the address lines present on this socket. If you have the character ROM option, the next step is to label and remove the special ROM. Now we insert the ROM X. and we insert the special ROM replacement. Don't forget to connect the cable. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we got. I'll turn on the machine. The first thing you know is that it comes to the ROM Exchange boot ROM. You might have noticed down here that there's a little countdown, and I pressed one of the keys on the keyboard to stop that countdown. If you don't stop that countdown, it will automatically boot to whatever you have the default of image set to, which in this case is AppleSoft Basic. Um, so let's go through some of the options here. So you can see all of the 15 or the, the 16 different, um, it's 15, the 15 different ROMs that you can select here. Um, and you pick those ROMs by literally just pressing a number. So say if I wanted to boot AppleSoft Basic but with lowercase support, I hit 2 and it boots it up and that's basically all there is to it. It's pretty straightforward. Awesome. So let's uh, go ahead and reboot the computer here. We'll take a look at some of the other features. So down here are some of the obvious features. Uh, I info for image. So say I wanted the uh, to see any of the metadata for one of these images. I could hit I, and it'll tell me some information about uh, that image that can be programmed, changed, whatever. Um, especially if you're uploading your own custom image, you can change what this information says. Um, set default boot image. So this one's obvious. If I hit S, then I can pick which one of these boot images starts automatically. So if I were to set this to D, say Apple Diagnostics, and then turn this off and back on and let it time out, it goes to the Apple uh, logic board test, which is really cool. So that is a cool feature there. So I'm going to go ahead and set that back to the default bank there. There we go. Uh, so that allows you to say that. And of course, when you boot it up, it shows it here. Next is the text charge and ROM default. So this is really cool. So if I hit T and say, I don't know, set it to four or something like that, and then boot up, you can see that the font is different now. So 
you can set the default font that the machine starts up with when you turn it on. Really cool feature. Now say, um, uh, let's, I'm going to change that back to the default, the zero. Um, now the next thing is going to be upload a new boot image. So I'm going to just going to go over this very briefly. The details in the very excellently written instructions are much better than my description is going to be. And if I were to try to go through the whole process with you on video, it'd take 30 minutes. It's not, it, it's pretty straightforward, but it is time consuming. But the process is basically thus. What you do is you get yourself a properly sized ROM image, which is going to be about a 12 kilobyte image. Um, if you download images from the internet, where the, uh, each ROM chip is its own separate piece, you have to use a tool to concatenate those together into a single 12 kilobyte file. You put that on a floppy disk, which you might be able to see that I've got my W drive connected over here, but you, can, you put that on a floppy disk, uh, boot into uh, good old fashioned DOS 3.3, then you load that image at, uh, that binary image at location, uh, hex 2000. Then you boot into the, uh, the version of this utility that comes on the utility disk that you can get from the website, uh, the product website. And you use that utility to then flash that image over to, uh, the ROM that's built into the system. It's, uh, pretty straightforward. It, there's a lot of little steps and caveats and special features that you could, um, that you can deal with when you're doing that process. For example, uh, there's a tool on that disk you can use to change what this information, this, this metadata information is shown, uh, before you upload it to the image. So you don't have to do it. Uh, you don't have to change it, uh, by hitting info there and changing it from inside the, uh, the ROM itself. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to go over a couple features as well that are not obvious from this screen. The, these, these features are detailed in the, uh, the instructions, which is really cool, but they're not shown here. So if you just kind of jump in and just start using it like this, you're going to miss these options unless you read the instructions. Now it is possible to programmatically switch between these ROM system images, the text of ROM images, and, uh, display this menu while the machine is running and do it programmatically from Applesoft or from uh, from machine language if you wanted to. Um, they don't describe how to do that yet in the current version because this is still a preliminary beta version for testing, but they are going to be coming out with a, a way to do that. So say you wanted to change the text on the fly for a game or something like that, you could do that. It has that capability. Now, each of these images as well can be, uh, have an individually set delay timer. So say you want to, uh, by default, this, uh, the, def the, the, the default image up here that I have set is set to boot after, say, two seconds or one and a half seconds. Um, but you can change that to, uh, different timeouts, uh, f uh, all the way from boot right now and never show this screen all the way up to a delay of about five seconds. It gives you a little more time to see this screen and react to it when you turn the computer on. And you do that through control D, I believe, or something to that effect. Info, control D, yeah, and you can see the delay. So say I want that, I want a really long delay on that. So you can change that however you like. Um, there is a key combination to erase all descriptions, all of this metadata description uh, from the uh, from this menu, and that is Control E. I'm not going to do that, however, because that is instantaneous, deletes all the data, and gives you absolutely no warning that it's going to do it. It just does it, um, and I don't feel like retyping all that data, so I'm going to leave that alone. The uh, syst the ROM chip also has a recovery mode. There is a jumper on the main ROM X device that you can pull out and move to a different, uh, a different, uh, location that brings up an emergency, uh, uh, an emergency backup ROM that's built into the, into the chip. Um, and this is useful if you're, say, you're updating the ROM X base image here, the control image, 
and it fails for some reason because of a power outage or some sort of glitch or your disk fails or whatever, it's got an emergency backup you use you can use to keep the machine running and allow you to reflash the image or get to your boot boot drive to run the the uh, the version of this that runs off the uh, utility image to reflash your device again without having to take this machine apart. That is really super duper helpful. Um, that also has uh, that uh, emergency image also has a built-in RAM check that te tests the first uh, 16K or so of memory, which is really cool for um, like triage diagnostics. But a uh, downside of booting into the recovery uh, mode is that when you boot in recovery mode, it deletes all of the, uh, the uh, metadata that you have for any ROMs loaded. That's kind of a weird trade-off. I'm not sure why it works that way, but that's the way it is. One final interesting thing I wanted to show is a built-in metadata feature that allows you to determine which text uh, charge-in gets picked when you select a specific image. So uh, if you edit your metadata information for your specific ROM and put ampersand T and then a number here, uh, in the name of that metadata information. That will tell the ROM X to pick a specific text charge in ROM uh, for that uh, boot ROM uh, at boot. So for example, like the Apple IIj Plus, well that's going to have the Katakana set, correct? So when you boot that up, it's going to pick the Katakana set by uh, telling it to do so. Or the same thing here too for AppleSoft basic lowercase. It's got this T2, which is basically saying, okay, well, we want the lowercase uh, character set from the Apple IIe, for example, to be selected. And it allows it to do that. Next, we have to talk about some caveats with the ROM X. So if you have an Apple II language card installed in your Apple II and you want to use it with the ROM X, you have to be aware that it's not completely and directly compatible. You have to make a couple of modifications to your language card in order for that to work correctly. The details of all of that are in the user, uh, in the user manual. Um, so you want to read that and be aware of that modification before you use the two in conjunction. Final thoughts? I really like this device. The ability to switch the different ROMs in your Apple II uh, without having to get inside the machine for some weird reason appeals to me. I think that's really nifty. Um, and being able to also have multiple different ROMs right at your fingertips to switch and change between different feature sets for your Apple II really makes your Apple II have multiple Apple IIs in one, and it's, it's really cool. Now, one feature that is really awesome that isn't the device itself is the user manual. The user manual that comes with this that you can download at their website is incredibly detailed. It does a really, really good job of explaining every uh, piece, function, and feature of this device. And it's like 34 pages long. How often do you get a retro device that has a super detailed and well-written set of documentation for it? It's kind of rare, so it's really good to see that they've put a lot of effort and time into uh, creating that instruction set for this uh, so that you're never going to be lost when working with uh, the ROM X. I do have to say that my favorite feature is that ability to switch between different ROM images without having to get inside the machine. Again, I don't know why that tickles my fancy, but there's just something magical be about being able to control the hardware from software. Maybe it's a little bit of uh, wa the waz in me, I don't know, but I really do like that feature. Now, I know that the Apple was made to be messed with on the inside. It was meant to be taken apart and touched and modified and tweaked, especially with all those awesome internal slots. But some days, you know, you just want to boot the computer up and get to work. And having these, all these different ROMs at your disposal makes that super easy. Thanks for hanging out with me today to check out this awesome upgrade for the Apple II. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on my latest adventures. If you want to support the museum, you can do so by dropping a dollar in the cup over at Patreon or by snagging some merch from my website, jcm-1.com. Links in the description. Well, that's all for today's episode. While you're here, check out some of my other videos. And remember, 8 bits are all you need.